Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy player here. So today, I'm going to demonstrate you my assignment that I did in 2019 slash 2020. So if you're not familiar with finite state machines, then I'm going to be honest, you might want to refresh your mind on that before you visit this section here. But just to give you a small basic definition of finite state machines, they're, they're of course machines with a possible set of configurations being true or false or zero and one. For example, your TV remotes, they, they have a they have the on and off switches or your phone when you click the power button. It can go on, it can go off. Just those sort of things. In this section we actually look into we look into both deterministic finite automatas and non-deterministic finite automatas. The diff the primary difference between the two is deterministic means one way. Non-deterministic means there are multiple ways for a certain transition from from one state to another. So, for example, if you have state alpha and it reads zero, it can go from state alpha to beta reading zero, or state alpha to Charlie reading zero. That's non-determinism. But if it was a deterministic finite automata, it can only go reading 0, for example, from alpha to beta, but it cannot read the same number 0 from alpha to charlie, it would have to pick a different number. But that's just a basic definition for you there with an example. So with, our, with my assignment, I don't know if it's going to be the same every year, so don't ask me if it is. Wait, you're given a problem description, a language, a string of alph alphabets, sigma meaning the sum of all values. In our case, it's 0 and 1. But don't ask, don't start asking me if why do they use Greek Greek notations for math, mathematician stuff. They just do, okay? I'm, I'm not a scientist, really, but they, the mathematicians or logicians find it much easier using Greek notations to represent certain symbols when it comes to mathematics. So, the um, let L be the language of strings of alphabets that contain two pair of adjacent zeros separated by an even number of alphabet symbols. So, just to break it down for you, you start off with an adjacent pair of zeros, then you have an even number of ones and zeros. So you can have 0, 0, 0, 0, or 1, 1, 1, 1 in between. But you cannot have an odd number of it, otherwise the language isn't accepted. So the first step is you have to create a non-deterministic finite automata that recognizes this language. I'm going to show you one of my examples. If you get caught and t told that you've been copying others' work, that's that's kind of your fault, really. But this is my example here. So we have our our start state draw IO perks of one of my colleagues when we we're working as a group on this assignment because it's actually a group assignment. The individual part, which I'm going to show you shortly, is a Java implementation and you have to run it through a command line interface simulating your finite state machine. But back to the diagram. So we have our start state. I have a looped edge reading zeros and one, zero or one. Zero and one. You cannot read both. You can only read one or the other. Let's, let's just get that clear in the air. So as you can see here, we have our start states normal let's see i don't i can't remember what they call them but we just call them states we have our start state and final states and then we have our regular states here to represent a non-deterministic finite automata i'm not going to show you the rest because my section covers the nfa so this is pretty much the solution but there's a bit more steps to it so we had to analyze it, we had to create what's called a transition relation, then we had to apply an algorithm that converts this non-deterministic finite automata into a deterministic finite automata. Oh my days, it was long. I'm just going to give you a little sneak peek because I'm, I'm a nice guy. Oh yeah, before that we had to test, we had to give like certain words to test this diagram above us. Here we go, transition relation. Yeah, this here iterative subset construction method we had to literally do this 
the thing is with this algorithm, you have to keep on doing it until there are no more new subsets introduced. That's the key thing with this algorithm. You literally you go back to your original diagram up here, analyze it. When you find there's new states, you have to give it some sort of symbol and it, it gets all mumbo jumbo and very confusing. But anyway, once once you've done the group part, the rest of it is pretty easy. I'm, I'm just going to show you my implementation now of my machine. So I've already dragged it onto the desktop so I can just show you showcase my work. So right here, I'm just reading it through a TXT document. But you might be asked just to test a couple words of your own, just to see is your machine efficient and it doesn't just check for these words if it's accepted or rejected. So I'm going to execute this right now. So it's not going to say anything right now, right? Yet. So let's try and say, let's write letters. It's going to immediately reject it. Let's be real. NFAs, they only accept numbers, zeros and ones, nothing else. Let's see if I test 45, 458. Rejected. Again, they're not they're not number zero one. Let's try one zero zero one zero zero one one one. Rejected immediately. Referring back to the diagram. I could trace my steps and I could see clearly it's rejected. What if I did a bunch of zeros? Accepted. You could literally read through the whole machine with a bunch of zeros. That's that's something that was catch that we were catched out on actually. But you need to remember, the machine needs to start with start with two consecutive zeros, followed by an even number of zeros and ones, or a bunch of zeros or a bunch of ones. So if I did zero zero, then zero 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 is accepted because it doesn't have to go through the loop edge, but it can go straight towards the final state. I could write a, write a bunch of zeros and it's still accepted. If I did a bunch of ones, rejected, because it's going to be still stuck on the start state. I'm going to show you my source code right now. So this is, I'm going to show you, this is for the set of words I'm testing. One thing to note, when I was testing this, do not put white spaces, because in my experience, when I tried to read the words, I knew when I checked it, it's accepted. But my program said is rejected. But because of those white spaces, it was causing me issues and I, I couldn't even think, why the fuck is it doing this? So make sure you clear out those white spaces, otherwise it's really going to cause you a problem. Right, here's my parallel filter class. Nothing special really, I actually got this implementation from my teacher himself. He actually gave like a, a prototype version. Our task was just to reinstate it to work for our purposes. We didn't really have to do too much work here, but this class, this is the one I had to really do the work on. I had to use, I had to first understand his prototype, map it to the diagram he used. My professor's a legend, just saying. <laughs> if, if he ever sees this video, shout out to you, Vassal, and you're, you are a legend. Anyway, so going back to the diagram. We, I completely forgot what I was saying, but yeah, the original prototype, it was mapped to another diagram. I had to understand how to code loop edges, transition from one state to another, and I had to direct it in some sort of way. The harder part was the middle part where it was like C and F, like at the same time, oh yeah, that's another thing. You might want to give your states more appropriate names. When we wrote F, there was a complaint that it's misleading because they might think, oh, is this your final state? Even though it doesn't look like a final state, you might, you might want to name it something else. You want, you might want to give it better names as Q1, Q2, Q3. I think that's more suitable than what I, what me and my group did. But you know what they say? It is what it is. But yeah, I'm just going to scroll through all this. This, this was a pain. Mapping, <sighs> mapping my states 
from start to finish, especially this part. Boy, oh boy. Well, this part to be specific. You can pause it, take a look for yourself, it's it's pretty insane. To say I didn't really have to change anything, I just had to say how many states there are then, there and then. Same with this. I almost forgot that 0 is also boolean for false and 1 is boolean for true. At the same time, I could have made, I could have just said return q and 1 dash dash 5. I could have just wrote equal to 1 and it would have been fine, but this is also fine, not equal 0. There won't be any problem, but as long as you can show your understanding of the difference between the two, you're absolutely fine. Anyway, it's been, it's been your boy player here, so if you actually want my source code, contact me on my Snapchat and Instagram. That's where you're most likely going to find me. I'm going to leave both in the description below for you to contact me if you ever need in the near future. Other than that, peace out.